can be very varied when patients seek care. Um, some people will not seek care until they actually develop symptoms of shortness of breath and will perhaps go in to see their primary doctor for evaluation of shortness of breath and perhaps uh, either lung function studies or imaging showed evidence that there was um, something abnormal with the lungs um, that was perhaps suggestive of interstitial lung disease. These patients will often, if they're presenting with dyspnea, then go see a pulmonologist who will further evaluate um, the interstitial lung disease and potential drivers. There's another subset of patients that I often see um, that will actually come in with rheumatic symptoms. Uh, so symptoms such as Raynaud's phenomenon or joint pain and stiffness or perhaps some other features of rashes or skin thickening. Um, and based on the diagnosis of the actual autoimmune disease and my understanding of which uh, patients may be at particular risk for interstitial lung disease, I may then progress to obtaining uh, additional workups such as a pulmonary function testing to see if I am seeing any subclinical evidence of lung disease. Taking scleroderma, for example, I do. there are certain subsets that are more at risk for interstitial lung disease. So in subsets in which clinically or either by laboratory, I, I do know that they are at higher risk for interstitial lung disease, I may go looking um, more intently for it uh, in order to detect it so we can um, better monitor it over time to determine need for treatment. It is really a multidisciplinary effort in regards to uh, treating and managing patients with interstitial lung disease. So uh, patients, for example, um, that do have interstitial lung disease in the context of autoimmune disease, um, the pulmonologist and the rheumatologist is really working together very closely as the rheumatologist um, is also assessing some other features of autoimmune disease that may also require treatment such as immunosuppressions uh, therapies. And so we are wanting to ensure that not only the patient's lung disease is, is being treated and managed, but also that we are addressing other uh, features of the autoimmune disease that may also require immunosuppression. So it really is a, a multidisciplinary care between rheumatology as well as uh, the pulmonologist. There can be a, a pretty wide range in the severity of disease. So there are patients, for example, using scleroderma, for example, that may have a little bit of a radiographic interstitial lung disease, but these patients will have a normal functional studies on PFT, uh, really not be particularly short of breath from interstitial lung disease, and they can remain in this category for their lives. There's another subset that may develop a little bit of functional changes um, based on the interstitial lung disease in which they may become a little bit more short of breath and we can see some changes in the lung function or the PFTs themselves. And this is the group that we, um, after, you know, sometimes we will monitor these patients to determine if they may progress. Um, and if so, we will implement immunosuppressive therapies. There is another you know, subset of patients that may progress more quickly, and instead of monitoring, we may implement uh, therapies in a very quick fashion. Um, so it really is uh, trying to assess where the patient's at, the level of symptoms that they're having, and, and the timing of when is the best to implement therapies.